Hello, I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. And this is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast with the toffee surprise. Is the surprise death? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> because this week we watched uh, The Happiness Patrol. Written by uh, Graham Curry, I guess. Directed by Chris Clough, again. And aired November of 88. Yeah, Chris Clough's really getting a good paycheck out of this show. <laughs> He's really wringing it dry in his last days. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so, yeah. Uh, Happiness Patrol. Should have just been called the Candy Man Can, to be honest. Uh, Candyland? Yeah. The movie? The TV show? Yeah. Pretty much. Um... Apparently, a super allegorical serial, which, I mean, I didn't get because I didn't know any of the history behind it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Helen A. And, is Margaret Thatcher. And, and, like, I mean, even if you did know this history, would you necessarily get it? I mean, maybe. I, I really don't know. Possibly. I I feel like the the Thatcher regime was... Regime. <laughs> <laughs> It happened close to when this aired. I don't know. It might have still even been going when this went on air. So I feel like it was more prevalent than than it would be today. Um. Yeah. I guess probably. And also, it would have aired in the UK where <laughs> yeah. it happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're sitting here with uh with our own dictator to deal with. Anyway. <clears throat> so, yeah, it begins with. Some <laughs> begins, girl begins getting with an killed. undercover yeah. cop. Um, <laughs> Silas this lady, P. Yeah, this lady um, is like set on joining a resistance movement against the happiness, happiness patrol. patrol slash government. Um, and this guy's like, I know a group that you could fit right in. Want my card? And she's like, Yeah, sure. And he gives <laughs> gives her the card, and she turns it over, and it's it's Silas P. Happiness Patrol. No, You're she, under arrest. She looks at it, and she's like, Oh, Silas P. And he's like, Other side. And she turns it over. <laughs> Happiness Patrol undercover. And he's like, Yep, you're under arrest. Yeah, you can tell that Silas P. is like so proud of himself for thinking up this trick, where he's like, <laughs> Check the other side. And she does it again. <clears throat> so um, yeah, I think she dies. Yeah, she gets killed. <laughs> They just take her to be executed uh, right then and there with no trial or anything. They just kill her. <laughs> Sounds like my kind of government. <laughs> so the doctor and a... Not really. No, not at all. It was a joke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the doctor and Ace arrive. Land. And they get out. And then the TARDIS is somehow instantly painted pink. Um, yeah, they walk away. I thought it was red. I don't know. They, the, the sets in this serial were terrible. <laughs> Let's just get yeah, that out of the way. <laughs> Apparently, it was going to be filmed in black and white, and they decided against it. But Sylvester McCoy found out later that they wanted to record it in black and white, and he said if he had known, he would have lobbied for them to do it in black and white because the sets were terrible. <clears throat> uh, I mean, yeah, that might have sort of masked um, worked the, for the terrible... <laughs> worked for the first six seasons. Um... <laughs> Um, not as a choice, really, but, um, yeah, there were sort of like, um, Paradise Towers, which makes sense, but... Yeah, but, but worse. But worse. <laughs> the only good set, in my opinion, was the Candyman's Lab. I mean, even <clears throat> that wasn't that spectacular. I thought Helen A's room was better. <laughs> Just because it's the best of the serial doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't. Um, and then there was um, the dog thing, dog. <laughs> which looked straight out of like Labyrinth or something. Slightly lower budget, maybe, than something like that. Well, my favorite part was when it was running through the pipes, and it was like very clearly just on wheels driving <laughs> through the pipes. <laughs> I was like, um, okay. So the Doctor and Ace land, and they get immediately captured by the Happiness Patrol, but they don't get yes. killed. So the Happiness Patrol um, are like the cops, obviously, um, but they wear they have like pink and purple <laughs> hair and like mini skirts. <laughs> There's no male Happiness Patrols except for Silas P, and he's undercover. Yeah, um, there were those <clears throat> two male 
um, guys. guys later. I don't really but know one who of them, they were. One of them was the confectioner who made the candy man, and the other one was apparently Helen A's husband. No, so. there were the two other dudes. Who, <clears> they like try and hold up the doctor for like five oh, seconds. The, the snipers? I don't know who they were. I, oh, I yeah. guess they're just snipers. Yeah, I guess all, all of the men have all the um, heavy duty jobs, like going undercover and gunning people down from a distance. <clears throat> um. All right, might also be part of the supposed political commentary. I really don't know. I don't know. So, yeah, Ace and the Doctor get taken to the waiting zone, which is just some marked off area of the set. Just, just prison like, with drawn the- a line on the ground. <laughs> <clears throat> it was the line that, like, if you cross this line, you're on camera now. And they're like, let's work this into the serial. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a set. It's just a corner of the BBC soundstage. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, this is like a, a little waiting area, but it's actually like a prison because... <laughs> They're allowed to leave, but if they cross the line, they'll get killed. So it's like, it's their choice. They have all the freedom they want, but there's this guard there ready ready and waiting to shoot them if they cross the line. But at least they have that slot machine to keep them busy. <laughs> that slot machine that tells terrible jokes? <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the waiting zone's like the Hotel California. Check out anytime you like. You can never leave. You die if you leave. Yeah, you, you never leave. <laughs> you just die. Um, so there's a guy already there. He's um, been imprisoned there, too. This is, um, God, what was his name? It was, uh, I don't know, but he dies, doesn't he? Yeah, he dies pretty pretty quickly. It's Harold V, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Harold V, because you know, he, he used to be Harold something else, and then he got demoted to Harold V. Yeah, he used to write the I thought he was saying Harold B, but I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> No, because I think it's supposed to be implied that the letter is like a status thing. Uh, yeah, I thing. guess Helen A. Helen A, and yeah. then her husband is whatever C. Yeah. <clears throat> then there was Daphne S and Silas P and... Oh, no, it was Daphne... Was it? It was Daphne, Daphne Q. No, it was uh, Daphne K. Oh, it and was Daphne Su- K. Yeah. Susie Q. Yeah, it was Susan and, uh, Q. And Priscilla P. And... Priscilla P. <laughs> so, well, I think it's... It's Susan Q who's in the waiting zone, isn't it? No, it's Susan Q is the one who um, sides God, with Ace. They all looked the same. <laughs> well, they were wearing the same costume, more or less. Their hairstyle was, like, slightly different, um, I think. Kind of. And uh, Daphne K had more noticeable makeup on her face. Daphne K um, was the, like, most easily, like, recognizable, because she was the one who looked like a who from Dr. <laughs> Seuss. <laughs> Well, Hel- actually, Helen A was the most recognizable well, yeah, because her costume was, was different. different. Yeah. <clears throat> but yes, yeah, so this go kart shows up uh, with some happiness. <laughs> yeah, this patrol. was so weird. Um, <laughs> they just come beeping beep out about this, so I should probably get out my notes. Um, and they like weird. They have this like weird and awkward scene where they ask the guard, uh, who I think the guard was Priscilla P. I'm not sure, but um. They ask her, like, hey, if we were to get in that go-kart and drive away, would you do anything? She's like, no, no, not at all. And you think, like, all right, she's lying, whatever. As soon as they get in, she's going to shoot them. But apparently not. Yeah, I think it was, like, the Happiness Patrol aren't allowed to kill anyone who's having fun. So the doc's like, if we get in that go-kart and have some fun, are you going to shoot us? Uh, And she's like, no, can't. They they didn't make that too clear in that scene. (laughs) They did later. Like, they made it, like, way too clear later. (laughs) So it would have been nice to have some balance there, but... <laughs> well, um, also, we forgot to mention the Doctor makes a reference to Invasion of the Dinosaurs <laughs> at the Does beginning. He? I don't he, remember. He gets off and he's talking to Ace. Oh, he's yeah, like, the yeah. Brigadier encountered a dinosaur once, and she's like, what? Yeah, in the London Underground, there was a bunch of T-Rexes and pterodactyls, and uh, may or may not have been my fault, but... <laughs> Ace is like, oh, Ace, I love <laughs> dinosaurs. Yeah, at least Ace gets to blow some more stuff up in this <laughs> serial, so, so far, so good. Yeah, Ace was pretty cool in this serial. <laughs> um... Oh, they're they're nice. they're def- they're not throwing away her like personality like they do with a lot of the companions. <laughs> She's still God. like sort of a hothead. She tries to like attack the guard lady. Um, the doctor's like, no, no. The doctor's acting really creepy in this serial, by the way. Uh, I guess part of his character change there. But he like talks under his breath a lot, like this. Yeah, because any sound will set off the freaking <laughs> sludge mountain of candy. <laughs> the ice cane. <laughs> The candy the cane. Candy cane. <laughs> uh, the candy cane. Uh. <laughs> <clears throat> um, 
So yeah, they get in the go-kart and it's super slow. <laughs> Literally just walking would be faster. But they gotta have fun. <laughs> you can have fun walking. So I guess the whole um, you can't have fun or we'll kill you government was just based on like Helen A's definition yes. of fun. Because you're not allowed to like walk around in the rain and it's like, hey, that could be fun. That could be somebody's definition no. of fun. According to Helen A, that's not fun. Yeah. Officially so. deemed not fun. We also didn't mention the soundtrack for this serial, which is actually, um, what's it called it's, in movies? Well, the difference between something sound and like the other type of sound. Is it like stereo and mono? No, no. It's like um, one is the soundtrack and the other is... Um, the score? The, no, the, one's the soundtrack slash score. The other is like... Not ambient sound, but um, sounds that are part of the movie. Oh. I don't know. I forgot what the term is. I know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, it's like super... I don't know. I don't, know. I don't actually know. <clears throat> I know what you're talking it's, about. Yeah, but... it's on the tip of my tongue. So you think the harmonica music is like part of the soundtrack, and you're like, all right, that's pretty cool. But it's actually Some guy just playing Earl the Sigma, <laughs> who I guess is just playing the harmonica whenever... He's it... playing the blues. So yeah, very, very... Um, prone to echo corridors there's also there. that elevator music that Helena is just <laughs> pumping into this to her society <laughs> oh yeah the doctor mentions he shows he brought ace to this planet because he's heard of a bunch of disappearances and he wants to know what's up yeah a diegetic sound that's what it like that's, that's what, what it is, is. Yeah. i don't know what the other one is the other one is the soundtrack <laughs> there's another word for it but yeah um so yeah it's earl sigma um we've got mention of the candy man i think uh, he's been mentioned. Now, yeah, he's been mentioned as like this killer, and, and I. <laughs> <laughs> he was honestly the best part of this serial. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have liked this serial if it didn't have the Candyman in. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> to be honest. Uh, well, uh, okay. So wait. We'll explain it when we get there, which is soon, because the Doctor and Ace get separated. Because the the go kart breaks down. The Doctor's like, I'm gonna fix it. You distract the Happiness Patrol, and then Ace distracts the Happiness Patrol in the best way possible. By getting captured yeah. by the Happiness Patrol, <laughs> um, they make the they have this scene where they like want they're like we want to get arrested and they're like they make it super obvious that they want to get arrested because by the time what's her face says actually says you're under arrest they're like wow finally <laughs> and like did you make it any more obvious <laughs> but apparently she either doesn't notice or doesn't care so. Well, the Doctor finds Earl Sigma and he's playing the blues. Which, and, are, which is also against the law. Yeah, because it's know, you sad. It's yeah, you know, you can't have a good time when you're listening to the blues, no. <laughs> hey, the blues could be fun to some people. Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. Except apparently not to Helen A. Who has giant <laughs> A's on her shoulders. <laughs> well, everyone had letters on their shoulders. Really? I didn't yeah. notice that. Even all the Happiness Patrol mm -hmm. people? The ha well, the Happiness Patrol people did. Like, Earl Sigma can, didn't, but the yeah. Happiness Patrol. I didn't notice that <laughs> at all. That was the only way I could tell them apart. But see, from what I could tell, it was only their left shoulder. So if their left shoulder wasn't facing the camera, you mm -hmm. had no idea who it was. Mm. <clears throat> I, I mean, I thought I was able to tell them apart, like, pretty easily. But <clears throat> I don't know. Because it was Daisy K was the one who talked to Helen yeah. a lot. Yeah. And Susie Q was with Ace. And yeah. Priscilla was not Susie Q or, <laughs> or Daisy K. <laughs> so but anyway. The Doctor and Earl... They head through the, like, pipes or whatever. Yeah. Or they the just kind of stumble area. upon the Candyman, or do they go there intentionally? I don't remember. I don't remember. They're, they mention the pipe um, people who actually don't show up for a little while, so it's sort of like uh, the time machine, kind of, except they're not humans. They're just like this other... Yeah. Um species or like the they're the original inhabitants of the planet because this is like an earth colony um but they were forced into the pipes by the humans yeah well we forgot to mention the census taker who yeah. interrogated the doctor and ace at the beginning of the serial he was um what was he Harold? no that wasn't harold harold was i don't know i don't remember <clears throat> i don't remember his name but i remember the doctor making a joke of it by saying oh yeah theta sigma was my, yeah, uh, something Sigma. He was like an off-worlder. Trevor Sigma. Trevor Sigma. And Doc's like, oh yeah, my nickname in high, uh, school, I guess, was Theta Sigma. Yeah, so I like definitively writing it off as a nickname <laughs> here. Just making sure that's not his real name. <laughs> like for all you people who thought that 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out you were wrong. So... 
the Doctor and Earl make it to the candy man. Oh, Earl Grey. No. <laughs> Earl Grey. Yeah, definitely not American, or definitely not British, you know, 100% American there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I was going to say, I think Sigma is just the generic rank for everyone who's not happiness patrol because ace gets the title of ace sigma later maybe <clears throat> it would be really confusing i guess yeah, I, yeah. can you imagine arriving on the planet and not knowing the naming scheme and assuming everyone's related to each other hey trevor sigma ace sigma earl sigma how's it yeah, going well i guess it's okay because uh helen like later says that they already succeeded in wiping out like a certain percentage 17 <laughs> percent um but anyway they they arrive in the candy kitchen <laughs> and we meet one of the best villains in years the candy man um, looks like he's made of licorice all sorts yeah mm. uh, um, okay so <laughs> funny later. story um i was looking up the candy man's uh doctor who wiki page because how couldn't you and um, of course how I, couldn't you i li- i I licked the page. <laughs> no, I clicked the page for licorice all sorts. I already knew what it was, but I just clicked it anyway because I'm interested in reading random Wikipedia pages sometimes. But um, it had the the template box on the bottom, uh, traditional British sweets, and apparently I've clicked on most of those. <laughs> They're just a British just... sweet aficionado. <laughs> I don't even remember reading or clicking on any of those articles. <laughs> Maybe it was like your mom or something. No, it, took your I have my own gonna... laptop. It wasn't <clears throat> my mom. Um, Maybe someone's trying to frame you for looking at British sweets. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe. Well, licorice also, it's pretty good. We had them in South Africa, pretty tasty. Yeah, we don't have them here. Uh, you don't that anything. much yeah. in great quantities. <laughs> you could import them. <clears throat> I mean, I mean, you can, them you can get them here probably somewhere, but somewhere. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> the candy man, um, his eyes are like little hypnosis <laughs> wheels. wheels. <laughs> and Constantly his, spinning. He has a like sort of metallic mustache. Uh, his whole body <laughs> sort of looks like a candified Cyberman, which is weird because he mentions later that his even the metallic looking parts of his body are made of like confection or something. But um, he wasn't even half as great until he started talking, to be honest. <laughs> and what did he sound like? He sounded like a <laughs> high pitched doll, not Dalek. Uh, yeah, I guess sort of like a high pitched Dalek. Um, <laughs> He screamed constantly. <laughs> it's like candy death for us. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Oh, God. Uh, he's filled with swirling caramel and peppermint. <laughs> and he doesn't even know what. And the way he kills his victims is with sweets. And they're so good that they cause sensory overload and destroy you. Yeah, he says the next execution is going to be the toffee surprise. <clears throat> surprise is death, like we mentioned. Yeah. Well, he well the candy man also has the candy caretaker, I guess. Uh, he <laughs> had a name crony. and a title, but I don't remember. Um, but he was the one who actually created the candy man yeah. in his ovens. <laughs> um, uh, but he sort of becomes <clears throat> subservient to the candy man. Kind of. They have a they have a strange relationship. <laughs> they have a mutually beneficial relationship. The Candyman helps him make sweets, and he helps find people for the Candyman to kill. So the, the Candyman's doctor... like, even though I serve Helen A as an assassin, it doesn't mean I don't enjoy killing people with my sweet treats. He's a real subtle assassin. <laughs> you imagine just chilling at like a big football event or something, and this Candyman comes lumbering up to kill you. Um, no, that's completely unrealistic. I would never go to a football event. <laughs> uh, so, well, so the Doctor and Earl look like they're going to get a shave now. So they're sitting in these, like, barbershop chairs, and they've got these black... They were, um, I mean, <laughs> they were more uh, restraining than barbershop chairs, you know, given the fact that they can't really get up. I mean, yes, but that was covered up by the black, like, tarp they had over them, which is what actually really sealed the deal on the whole barbershop deal. <laughs> Uh, anyway, the candy man comes up and he's like, hey, what's up? I'm 
A McCann man, man. <laughs> who could take the sunrise <laughs> and <laughs> sprinkle it with dew. <laughs> uh, um, well, not this candy man, because he'll kill you, too. <laughs> yeah, that's how episode one ends, is they're going to die. And uh, episode two begins with the doctor fooling the candy man into knocking over a glass of lemonade, which sticks his feet to the floor. And then the Candyman spends most of the rest of his screen time stuck to the floor, yelling at um, the other guy to try and get him out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, oh yeah, Gilbert M. That was yeah. the guy's name. He was the guy who created the Candyman. So the Doctor and Earl Sigma escape... And then we get this execution, and Helen A is just watching on a personal view screen in a... Which is also like a communicator. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the doc- and then the doctor goes to talk to Trevor Sigma and somehow fools him into taking him to Helen A. Um, yeah, it was kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, it was I very I guess also weird. part of the doctor's new dark character. <clears throat> No, I don't even think it was that. I just think it was just thrown in there because they needed an explanation for the doctor to get to Helen A, to be honest. Should have just walked through a random door and been in her like, office. Oh, this is hell. Okay. <laughs> so he confronts Helen. They have a little chat. They have a tete-a-tete. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Helen A, like, really... Um... Likes her dog thing. <laughs> no. I was going to say... Uh, really not subtly hides his book behind her um, when the doctor and Trevor Sigma come in. She just like shoves it behind the cushion she's sitting behind and then she goes into her office and the doctor goes and picks up the book and it's a photo book because it's just pictures of her and Fifi. Yeah. <laughs> um, does that really come into play later? No, it's just there. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. I guess I don't really remember them doing anything with that. They didn't. Um, maybe it's supposed to be, this is, this is a big stretch, but um, maybe it's supposed to be like she's looking back on the bad times she took pictures of and enjoying it. So. But they're all pictures of her and Fifi. Yeah, maybe she actually hates Fifi. <laughs> Try not to say Fifi, because, yeah, if you don't know what that means, Urban Dictionary it. <clears throat> well, her dog's name is Dog. Dog creature. His name is Fifi, so... Yeah. <clears throat> I'm still going to try not to say it, though. And she says it like a hundred times in the serial, too. And she screams it at the it end. It was like 50. <laughs> she screams it at the end. Yeah. So... Meanwhile, Ace is has met um, Susie Q. Yes. Who explains that uh, she sort of just submitted to the Happiness Patrol... Um, because she thought it would like um, resisting would just be the harder thing to do, even though she doesn't like what they do because they killed her friend. Oh yeah, Silas P died. Yeah, he tried to capture the doctor, and the doctor flipped the tables on him and bolted with Earl. Yeah, yeah but Ace and Susie Q team up. Susie Q basically decides at this point to uh, let Ace go. She's like, "I'm gonna close my eyes and give you this key. What you do then is up to you." I kind of also like Paradise Towers a little bit when the Doctor nips the key off the uh, um, yeah, keychain. Yeah, in the sense the both of those scenes have keys in them, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and guards, that's pretty much it. <laughs> kind of like the key to time, which also had a key in it. <laughs> the keys of Marinus. Yeah, the keys of Marinus. <clears throat> so, Actually, neither of those really had keys. keys. Well, the keys of Marinus, I guess. Key to time wasn't really a key. It was more just a cube. Yeah. So Ace bolts and uh, runs into the pipes, I think. No. Well, I don't remember. so there's the execution, and the execution gets messed up because uh, the the doctor's gone to the candy man and basically made, struck a deal with him, which is I'll unfreeze your feet if you divert the pipe flow of the toffee surprise. So the candy man's like, okay. So he does it, and then the candy man's like, well, our deal's over now. I guess I can kill you. <laughs> Doc's like, right, and glues him to the floor again. <laughs> Yeah, kind of felt bad for the. I mean, he was an assassin and a ruthless killer. Um, handmade of candy. <laughs> handmade of candy. Um, but I, uh, I kind of felt bad for him. Like, he finally got unstuck, and then all of a sudden, there's another bottle of lemonade, and he gets stuck again. The uh, candy goes bad, doesn't it? 
What? Like candy expires at some point, right? It depends say, on like, what it, like, shouldn't, it depends shouldn't on the, uh, the candy man at some point, like... Maybe he's new. I don't know. <laughs> shouldn't he at one point just start falling apart because all, everything he's made of is... <clears throat> they, they could have thrown in some, like, existential stuff, like, at the <laughs> end, like, you didn't know candy man, but you're gonna die soon. And he's like, what? What? I can't, I'm not even gonna try and do his voice, but, um... Yeah, there's one segment, I think it was his middle segment, um, was like a hard candy, I think, and it looked sort of um, like glazed over, like crusted over, <laughs> <laughs> like a syrupy sweet. What if he starts growing mold? What's his name? Um, um, I don't know. He's just, yeah, I don't know. The confectioner states at one point that if the candy man doesn't keep moving, his joints will like yeah, freeze yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yep. <clears throat> but uh, he always keeps moving, so yeah. So that's not a problem. <laughs> Tell the doctor freezes him to the floor. <laughs> so the doctor and Earl in episode two now basically go around inciting a rebellion for the next 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, come to think of it, Earl was kind of a pointless character. I mean, he was just <laughs> there to play the blues, and surprise, the only non white character <laughs> is like the most relevant. Episode, yeah. Surprise, surprise. <clears throat> So, yeah, well, yeah, we also reveal that there's, like, this candy flow ready to crumble into the pipes at any minute on the right note. And Earl's like, oh, guess I better shouldn't play my harmonica in the pipes then. And the doctor's like, no, no, play uh, an A. You know, no, that's no an episode three. No, <clears throat> oh, well, When he whatever. kills Fifi. <laughs> All just blended into one. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, well, Ace and Susie Q uh, get captured again. Yeah, the Happiness Patrol is, like, killed. The, so Ace is going to audition for the Happiness Patrol, um, or she's going to be forced to. Yeah. Uh, and apparently if you fail the auditions, you die. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, happiness will prevail. <clears throat> because if it doesn't, you're going to die. <laughs> So well, pretend to be happy. So they keep piping in that elevator music, but they also, every so often, pipe in a cheerful message from Helen A that says, happiness will prevail. Yep. Um, so, yeah, episode two ends with the Doctor finding out that A Sigma's going up on the forum, and he's like, why are they only putting the posters up now? And the guy is like, it's just a formality. Everyone's required to show up anyway. <clears throat> I... Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that's how that ends. And then episode three begins with, uh, the doctor goes into the forum and he's happy. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. Really played up, um, scene there. Also really weird and, uh, awkward. The doctor confronts the sniper guys, I think. Oh, yeah, he already does that. that. Confronts these two snipers and, like, really darkly convinces one of them not to shoot him but yeah that scene was kind of pointless too i mean i guess it's just play i guess it was supposed to be like a montage of the doctor <laughs> inciting this rebellion but it Should was less a montage and more just a sequence of unconnected scenes <laughs> <clears throat> anyway the doctor <laughs> and i think earl is there i'm not really well, sure everybody shows up and they're having a yeah, big like fiesta pretty much <laughs> everyone <laughs> Who's a part of this serial sh except Helen who shows up and um are having a big party. Yeah, they, they the start forum. partying awkwardly and then do, do, some do, do, some do, do, happiness do, do, do. patrol people show up and they're like, Hey, we're gonna shoot you and they're like, Nope, you can't, we're having a great time And, and they're, they're like, like Oh darn. shoot, you're right. And then some other happiness patrol people show up and are like, You happiness patrol aren't having a good time. Looks like we're gonna have to kill you and then those happiness patrol are like, No 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 no, you can't kill happiness patrol and then Ace and the Doctor make a daring escape in that also slow as dirt car that they brought. <laughs> um yeah, they confront Helen at some point. Well Helen sends uh Fifi into the pipes or whatever to go kill some people. <laughs> They end up killing Fifi yeah. in, like, a candy well, avalanche. Yeah. <laughs> well, also then, the Doctor and Earl go to confront the Candyman again. Well, no, the Doctor and Ace, sorry, go to confront uh, the Candyman again and uh, basically threaten him with a hot poker. And he's <laughs> Two like, hot pokers. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. better than one. 
No, I thought Ace chucks the poker to the doctor, and that's how he gets. Oh, I don't know. <clears throat> and he does this awesome catch of this burning hot poker <laughs> at one end. So, yeah. They force the Candyman into the pipes. Um, uh, in which, which you don't understand gets... why yet until they... Well, he gets, like, processed or something. He gets killed by the toffee surprise. <laughs> he comes out the other end just mangled. Where? Like his character was <laughs> by uh, the company that almost sued the BBC, which we can mention later. Um, well, then the confectioner and Helen's husband uh, are just standing there as he comes out, and the confectioner guy's like, well... And the guy's like, do you know the candy man? He's like, yeah, I, I made him. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. He's like, I only made the body. The mind was all his own. And so, he, uh, yeah, I don't really care that he's dead now. No, he doesn't say that. Well, his explanation was that like he accidentally created a germ on his one planet that killed half the population, <laughs> so he got exiled. And he took this guy's like bones and mind with him and built him a new body, which was the Candyman. And he's like, probably better for him to stay dead, to be honest. Really strange to put that backstory like right at the end. Of yeah. The- <laughs> You know, might have made the Candyman seem more menacing if it was at the beginning. <laughs> but hey, I'm not the one making these decisions, obviously. So, uh, there's this radio broadcast that Helen is listening to. It's like 120 facilities have been taken over by the rebels. She's like, oh, shoot. So she tries to evacuate. In her spaceship, but no. <laughs> and, but uh, who Daphne K, I think, shows up and she's like, you aren't trying to evacuate, are you, Helen? You aren't unhappy with the situation are you helen she's like no no of course not um but then she turns on the view screen or whatever it gets a call or something and it's her husband and um the other dude they're and like, they're like we made up with his spaceship <laughs> she's like wait what and they're like yep we decided to betray you totally Bye. wasn't hinted at at all throughout the entire serial it's kind of just coming out of nowhere right here but we're doing it so <laughs> bye <laughs> Well, I mean, let's be honest. You you would betray uh, some crazy despotic leader who forces you to be happy all the time, or otherwise you die, too. Yeah, I would. And who has a crazy manic monster as a pet who could kill you at any minute. Yeah, I would. But at the same time, you know, you kind of feel bad for Helen on some level, like for some reason, like <laughs> slightly. Nah, I didn't. Uh, I, I kind of did, like later on when she mentions, like, I just wanted people to be happy. And like, yeah, you probably shouldn't have gone that far with it. Um... <laughs> But yeah, to some extent, I was like, all right, sure. Uh, yeah, well, okay. <laughs> Most of me was like, nah, Helen, go away. <laughs> Daphne, on some level. Daphne K holds the doctor at gunpoint, and then Susie Q shoots the gun out of her hand, and the doctor's like, where did you learn to shoot like that? And Susan's all like, oh, she taught me. And he's like, oh, thanks, Daphne. <clears throat> yeah, that was kind of um, funny. I didn't laugh or anything. <laughs> it was just mildly humorous. Yeah. You mentally chuckled. Yeah. So... It was like, I, I lolled. You know when you type lol, you never actually <laughs> laughed. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's how you type ha-ha when you laugh and no, lol when I, you don't. No, I, I type ha-ha when I don't laugh as well. <laughs> that's how you type raffle when you laugh. I, I don't <laughs> laugh when I type any of these things. <laughs> <laughs> Lamau. Do you type laugh when you laugh? No. Insert laugh track here. <laughs> so the doctor uh, chases down Helen A. She's like trying to nonchalantly just walk through this corridor with her suitcase of stuff. Yep. And the doctor's like, it's over. You lost. I incited a rebellion that totally toppled your government in one day. Honestly, you should be a little bit impressed at me. <laughs> you, you took years to build this regime and I toppled it in one night. He doesn't say that, but you could sense it. <laughs> it's kind of true. You can sense it. <laughs> um, and then Helen sort of is like, well, I just wanted people to be happy. And, and the you know, says, the, uh, kill, the killing yeah. and despotic government <laughs> stuff came later. <laughs> so, like, doesn't really excuse it, but, like, on some level, like, yeah, she was coming from a good place, so. Eh. <clears throat> the doctor says, like, happiness can't exist without sadness. Yeah, he gives Helen this whole big speech, and I mentioned this in, um, gosh, what was it? Delta and the Bannerman. Yeah, Delta and the Bannerman. It's like, sure, um, but I think it's more, well, it's more typical, uh, obviously. And I, I don't know, it's just, it feels better when it's like a big speech to like a recurring, not a recurring, <clears throat> yeah, I guess a recurring, or like mm-hmm. a major villain like Davros or someone. Uh, but I guess it was all right, you know, <clears throat> sure. 
I mean, They're this trying one... to impart some morals onto <laughs> you, but it's like, all right, whatever. It's it's towards Helen. <clears throat> I don't so. know. I I guess if you like read into the speech, the doctor never explicitly says that wanting people to be happy was wrong. He just said that Helen failed to recognize that yeah, to be happy, you obviously. also needed sadness. Yeah, which I think is like. I think it's like pretty it's true. It's I mean, true, it's true, but it's also like pretty interesting for the doctor to like. He didn't explicitly state you were wrong for doing this. Like everything you did was terrible. He just said what you were doing, you just went about it the wrong way, and you just didn't understand the concept of happiness. And for that, I'm sorry for you. <clears throat> and then yes, and so. she's just... running. Well, she's running away, and the doctor's like, "Well, why are you running?" She's like, "Well, I'm running. I'm running away." And she's like, "And the doctor's all, well, you're not running from me. You're running from yourself." Because he's like, I'm not going to stop you. Deep. No. <laughs> well, he says, I'm not going to stop you. He's like, the only thing you have to worry about here are all the miners. Uh, well, not the miners. It was an allegory for the miners revolt during Thatcher's time. All the uh, all the Candy killjoys, men, I no. guess. No, yeah, the killjoys. Um, <clears throat> which is what they called them. Um, yeah, I, I guess not really that great, but sure. I mean, so. it was kind of interesting. Uh, it ends with like Helen weeping with... <laughs> beefy in her arms the doctor and ace are like this is the the hand thing well then we get only the greatest pun that's ever been in the show where uh <laughs> the guy's like well you can't have the happiness without the blues and in the background you can just see that someone's painting the tardis blue and i'm like wow yeah, wow. well, no, they cut away it's like to some time later, and it's uh, I think it was Ace who was putting like a finishing touches on it. Well, because she notices they missed a spot when she's going to the toilet, she just grabs it and like finishes it up while yeah. they're about to leave. I'm like, she wow. just kept it red the for blues. a while. Wow, I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be <coughs> pink. It looks red to me, but <clears throat> yeah, whatever. They should have just done it in black. If they'd done it in black and white, you wouldn't have even known. I uh, guess. Um. So, um, yeah, now that Helen, now that the revolt has succeeded and Helen has been overthrown, the government falls into chaos, hundreds of anarchy. people die. Get anarchy, <laughs> uh, then they institute a... And then a counter-rebellion shows up and they're like, you know what, Helen was right. They yeah, try and reinstitute just... everything, it leads to giant civil war and eventually the destruction of the planet. I mean, so, uh, <laughs> if you go on like historical basis, yeah, it's probably probably what happens. <laughs> History goes in cycles. It's always despotic rule. Like you always start as a democracy, then it builds up. The rule always start as a democracy. Usually, <laughs> yeah, ruler grabs more and more power, becomes a dictator, overthrown, institute full democracy again, and then slowly just decays in the cycles. <clears throat> I mean, look at Oliver Cromwell. I'm sure he's laughing right now, dead in his grave. Because of that really rebellion, a, he tried to lead. He, so he led that rebellion, wasn't and then he really basically took over. Wasn't really a democracy they instituted <laughs> there. It was more of just another regime, um, well, everybody which thinks, was just a placeholder thing. Everybody thinks their regime is better, and they're all wrong. <laughs> they're all wrong. Yeah, that's <laughs> why we should just go back to the feudal system. <laughs> we should just go back to like nothing hunter gatherer days, where we all formed little pods of people. Living on our own. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, so the company tried to sue the show. Yeah, because the Candyman um, supposedly <laughs> looked similar to a certain mascot, um, which is apparently really famous in Britain. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I didn't, um, I think I've seen the mas- this mascot before I forgot his name, um, but like, I didn't, I, you know, when I saw the Candyman, it wasn't like an immediate thing. I didn't like pick up on that. Okay, he's he looks kind of like this mm-hmm. guy that everyone, this cartoon character that everyone knows. Um, but maybe that would be the case for the British. They're like, you know, if they see the Candyman, they immediately think of this guy. I don't know how um, much a part of that culture this yeah. character is. I don't know if it's like Mickey Mouse or it's like <laughs> or some or something more obscure. I really don't know. Um, but I looked up the character, and yeah, he doesn't look that similar. <laughs> <laughs> well, the intent to sue was there, and that's, uh, you know... Apparently they... It's some, a thought that counts. <laughs> ap- apparently they led some internal investigation to decide whether he looked enough like the character, and they decided, no, he didn't. 
Um, but the BBC was just like, we're going to play it safe and never bring the Candyman back. Can you imagine being on that committee? They're like, so today we're going to investigate if this TV character... This looked, candy assassin. <laughs> ...looks like our mascot. Here's the two pictures. You've got I don't think three it was weeks. our mascot. I think it was just uh, an external... An exter- that's even... Because <laughs> if it was from like, the company, obviously they're going to say, like, yeah, it looks similar. Well, it's, men is like, okay, here's a picture of the Candyman, here's a picture of the mascot, you've got three weeks, tell me if they look similar. <laughs> yeah, they have to they have to list the similarities and the differences. <laughs> the guy drags it out for three months because he knows he can get three months pay out of this job because <laughs> he finished all the work on day one. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the Candyman is never coming back, unfortunately. He came back in prose form once, apparently. Yeah, but that's not enough. We need more Candyman. You want him to face off against, like, Peter Capaldi's 12th Doctor? Sure. Or... I just want him back in general. <laughs> Baby, come back. You uh... were made of candy. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I suppose that wraps that up. Um, you can email us at thedoctordecadavegetable.com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry events, love letters, your thoughts on the uh, the design of the Candyman. Um, you can find us on YouTube, Google Play, and iTunes, all at Trust Your Doctor. Leave a any if you like the show. Totally forgot what I was supposed to say there for a second there. <laughs> you just cut that out. Also check us out on Facebook, Trust Your Doctor, like us on Facebook, and also check us out on Twitter at TYD Podcast and follow us on Twitter. And next week we watch uh, Silver Nemesis, but until then, the end.